Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren 20 here, and I am here with a brand new movie. Brand I'm here with episode 16 of my Halloween horror movie reviews. <laughs> and this episode is gonna be for a prequel movie. And this is a prequel movie that came out in 2011. And it's a prequel to easily the best John Carpenter movie of all time. And that movie is for none other than. Person that movie was none. Its prequel was to is none other than John Carpenter's The Thing. Let me recap this. This movie is an outright classic, the best John Carpenter movie of all time. If you're getting into horror, you should definitely check this thing out. It is absolutely a phenomenal masterpiece. And it's, believe it or not, guys, actually a remake of a 1957 horror movie. And was actually hated by critics when it was first released. Surprisingly, but now it's viewed as a classic film. And a phenomenal film in pop culture. And just a work of art in cinema. So yeah. However, despite this being a prequel, I often consider this a remake, and there's good reason why. But we're going to get to that stuff in a bit. But until then, what is this movie about? Paleontologist Kate Lloyd is invited by Dr. Sender Alvaron to join his team who have found something extraordinary. Deep below the Antar Antarctic ice, they have found an alien spacecraft that has been there for perhaps 100,000 years, not far from where the craft landed. They find the remains of their occupant. It's cut out of the ice and taken back to their camp, but as the ice melts, the creature re reanimates and not only begins to attack them, but manages to infect them, with team members devolving into the alien creature. Yeah, so, I'll recap something. So, before I begin this review, how did this movie get made? Well, after creating 2004's Dawn of the Dead remake, Producers Mark Abraham and Eric Newman began to look through the Universal Studios library to find new properties to work on. Upon finding John Carpenter's 1982 film, The Thing, the two convinced Universal to create a prequel instead of a remake, which Blumhouse is going to be doing. <laughs> the two convinced Universal to create a... I mean, no, I just sort of said that. As they felt that remaining John, remaking John Carpenter's film would be like painting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. That's ironic, because a John Carpenter film in 2007 got a remake. Eric Newman explained, I'd be the first to say no one should ever try to do Jaws again, and I certainly wouldn't want to see anyone remake The Exorcist, which Blumhouse is also going to be doing. And he really felt the same way about The Thing. It's a great film. But once we realized there was a new story to tell, with the same characters and the same work, but from a very different point of view, we took it as a challenge. It's the story about the guys who are just ghosts in Carpenter's movie. They're already dead, but having Universal give us a chance to tell their story was irresistible. <laughs> so yeah. So of course, this film had quite a controversial production. Yeah, and I honestly gotta say, I think this movie is terrible. This film is such a disgrace to the John Carpenter classic. Just why, oh, why would you make any kind of follow-up sequel or prequel or remake to the, be the best John Carpenter movie of all time that was perfect as a standalone movie? Just why? Why? Oh, God, here we go. The bad qualities for this movie are exactly the CGI... Effects for 2010 standards are so mediocre. There's like no substitute for the famously horrific stop motion or practical effects of the original. Yeah, like the original relied on such great practical effects and the stop motion that made it more terrifying. Here, it's just a bunch of CGI, but actually this film was going to rely on the same kind of practical monster effects as the John Carpenter movie. But after a test screening were or possibly some of Universal's most dumbass finance financers said it. This was for collector Agus movie, which was the intent. The film even being shot on 80s cameras with real 35mm film. So, 
They were like, we want this movie. I thought it got So yeah. The film ended up being reworked with the rushed poor quality CG effects literally traced over the practical effects. So, thanks a lot, Universal idiots. You just ruined what could have actually been a decent movie. It could have actually been kind of enjoyable. No, instead it just ends up being yet, could have been one of the few best qualities of the film, but no. Like, and the film opens up with a Norwegian Guess how this movie even opens up? Remember how the movie opened up with a dog carrying some sort of thing and it being chased? Such an epic opening scene. Here, the opening scene for this movie opens up with a Norwegian scientist telling a joke about a boy having sex with his grandmother, which has nothing to do with the film, nor does it even need to be in a horror movie, especially a horror movie like this. Yeah, and speaking of the Norwegians, the Norwegians all speak English. There's not, pretty much not one moment where they ever have a subtitled scene. Not one of them. Literally every one of them speaks English. Like, come on. Fine, have your main, two main leads speak English, but... Come on, you could at least had some of them. Had, like, some of them at least speak, speak in subtitles, because they're Norwegian. But anyway. And there's even this stupid jump scare. One of the characters... Sneaks up behind someone who's watching that ice and says, BOOM! Which is very creative. <sighs> yeah, like, the thing's entrance is stupid. Like, the thing bursts out of the ice. It's probably some of the most laughably bad CGI I've ever seen. And near the end, the thing creature even takes the form of a human face. And even that shot is so laughably stupid. Because of how stupid the CGI in this movie is. And they even explain some things that didn't even need to be explained for the original. Like, how the axe got in the wall. Yeah, we need... Yeah, like, anybody, like everybody needed to know that. <laughs> yeah, test... Test screenings even led to a... To cutting a section about the origin of the thing. The spacecraft belonged to alien scientists who had retrieved the thing as a specimen only to be killed by it. So whether this is a bad thing or a good thing depends on how mysterious one would prefer the creature to be. This does, however, lead to an extremely intrusive digital effect of a weird blocky computer display being painted over the craft's alien pilot, leading to the direct to referring to his cut as the pilot version and the cinema cut as the Tetris version. Yeah, and this movie is a prequel, but there is one thing. You're about to find out why I always refer to this movie as a remake. And it was on my worst remakes list. Because it feels more like a remake of the original movie. Even though it's supposed to be a prequel. I mean, yeah, like, they rehashed the same plot points from the John Carpenter movie. And gave it the same title. John Carpenter movie was called The Thing. This movie's called The Thing. How create? Yeah, they could have at least called it The Thing The Beginning. Or The Thing The Origin. But no, 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 no. We have to have the same time. Literally every single follow-up needs to have the same title as the original, like Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, Candyman 1992, Candyman 2021. Doesn't even have the same charm as the original did. Plus, the characters aren't even likable or interesting in any way, shape, or form. And the protagonist is a strong, intelligent female character, which, as usual, translates to all the males being stupid because Hollywood doesn't know how to write smart people. This film is poorly paced, particularly in comparison to the original. And the thing itself, rather than larger remaining hidden or shrouded in darkness and usually retreating after killing, spends a lot of time out in the open, menacing people and being a gruesome CGI monster. This rather plays against the feelings of tension and paranoia because anyone could be the thing. Indeed, John Carpenter has been known to state even he does not know who is or is not a thing at given any time in the original movie, which is perfect. It just makes the film even more, more horrific. It also tends here. We need to see everything. We need to see the monster in every single scene. It doesn't work. It's shitty. It's dumb. It also tends to go through a slow process of turning to something horrific before actually attacking anyone. 
And like I said, nobody could think of a subtitle for the film that was ultimately given the same name as the original, confusing audiences after whether it was a prequel, sequel, or remake, and I call it a remake. And it contradicts the original in several places in particular. In the original, the Norwegians had fully exposed the alien spacecraft, while here they just dug a tunnel down into the inexplicable cavern it is in. And guess who helped write this? Eric Kaiser, who actually worked on 20, did work on Final Destination 5, the second best Final Destination movie, but he also did write <coughs> the abysmal 2010 remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street. That explains a lot. And this, and not to mention, what else? We have a lame twist where it's revealed that the spaceship is crashing the ice earlier in the film, which was that it crashed in the ice earlier in the film was working the whole time. Though the spaceship could have just fled after when the Norwegian people arrived at the base. They could have just fled. Or they could have used it to escape. Or the pe Norwegian people could have hacked into it and even used it to escape. So this whole movie is just kind of pointless. But however, I guess there are some good qualities. I mean, despite being technically more like a remake, it manages to get a few things that were seen in a 1982 movie like how Mac and Doc found a frozen man in Slit's throat, had a split face thing ended up burning his throat, how two Norwegians wanted up shooting at a dog in a helicopter, so I guess this, that makes sense. And near the end of the film, you can well, listen closely, you can kind of hear the original theme music beginning to play. And the thing's designs look pretty decent without the shitty CGI. Shitty CGI too, so. And the practical effects that the filmmakers were going to originally use before Universal made caused them to be scrapped, actually to, to match more modern film, actually look amazing. And there's some passable acting and some decent soundtrack by Marco Beltrami, but other than that, yeah. This was probably a shitty attempt at a prequel. It's a shitty follow-up. It's basically yet another cash grab remake of a John Carpenter classic. And here's how I'm going to rank it. I am going to give The Thing 2011 a 4 out of 10. And there we go. We've now got both Thing movies out of the way. If that wasn't enough, I can't believe Blumhouse is gonna ruin John Carpenter's classic even more now, with now a second remake. Great. Can't wait for that. Ugh. But anyway, what's gonna be the next episode this upcoming, this whole week? Well, we are going back to Vampires for the next episode. And Vampires going all the way to the 80s. Yeah. So, what is this next episode movie going to be for the next episode? Well, here's what the movie's going to be. Yes. Next episode is going to be the very first Lost Boys movie. Easily my favorite vampire movie of all time. So I can't wait to do this. <coughs> yeah. And you all know it has two shitty directed db sequels, but thankfully we are reviewing the first one. And not those abominations. But until then, that'll be it for this episode. Thank y'all for watching. If you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120. 